Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another exciting video. I was going to show you uh, a dual video with this deck, but before I do, I want to go ahead and straight to the point and show you how interesting this deck profile is. As you guys might not notice, this is supposed to be a Kastria Danger ne Bastille Nemesis deck. So let me rephrase that. It's a Kastria Danger Bastille Nemesis deck. So let us proceed. Starting off as our first nemesis monster, we're playing Arch Nemesis Aschatos. I wouldn't really consider playing Protoss. It doesn't really matter if Protoss banned or not. But not only because he's a beat stick, sure, he requires three different mo he requires three monsters of different types to special summon from your field and or gra uh, and or graveyard. But he is easily searchable with cards like Magnamut as well as Flag, so he's a must of. And not only that, if you de once you declare a certain type, not only are all monsters of that type destroyed, and this card's not affected, neither player can special the monsters of that type until the uh, end of next turn. And we're going to be going to our Bistial cards, which are Bistial Juice Worm. So I'm, whether the, for the people who are n unaware of how the Bistial cards work, Basically, they could sp ban they could special summon themselves by banishing a light or dark in either player's graveyard, and then not only that, they they become quick effects if your opponent controls a monster. And Drew Swarm's main is is an important card because you, it's not something you max out on, but it's easily searchable with Magnemite, which I will be showing casing guys. But when he sends the from the fields of graveyard, you can target one special summon monster opponent controls and send it to the graveyard. So this definitely helps. Whether you're trying to link summon and you use this card to go into the extra deck. So anything that you can link summon off using this card is always guaranteed to target one special summon monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Because you are benefiting by link summoning with this card. Because it opens up a lot of plays as well as you get to make the most out of this card's ability. Re is, is the reason why you made one copy and we're maxing out obviously three bestial magnum hut sorry for the for the beyond it's magnum hut what makes this card the key piece of bestials and the most important one is that during when it's special summon during the end phase you can add one dragon type monster from deck or graveyard to end except itself some people are suggesting to play the lubelion but i don't Personally, think he is mandatory. It's only for I feel like if it's only playing pure Bastille, if anything, it just makes the deck more cloggy, and you want to keep your deck at forty. So, Lubelion is not that mandatory, depending what you're what you're after. Unless you're trying to set up your Bastille spells like that are brand have brand in its name that are continuous, then maybe yes. But overall, this card you have to play it through because you're always guaranteed a search. But although it's until the end phase, it's the fact that in itself it becomes a quick effect. So you could summon this during your opponent's turn when your turn hasn't started, and you it can pretty much give you the upper hand by helping you go helping you going second. So you could be able to set up your link spam, as well as having an additional card in, as well as having a free special summon on the field. So our for big danger monster, we're going to Bigfoot. Uh, I'm not playing Thunderbird. I think it's the the least useful. The reason why we're going to Bigfoot because he has the 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 biggest attack stat. On top of that, like if he's discarded by card effect, but how the dangers work, obviously I'm sure most people should be aware is that you reveal them to your opponent from your hand. Your opponent chooses one random card from your hand. If they discard a danger, they their effects will activate. If not, if they discard a random card. You discard the random card you special summon and you draw one card. So for Bigfoot, not well, the reason why he's the most useful, though obviously you don't want to um, go be unlucky, is that if he's discarded, you could target one face-up card your opponent chose, destroy it. So you could still match to activate the second one, as long as you match special summon the first one. So how it works, but it depends all, depending how you feel. It depends how much you need, how many monsters you need on the field to outclass your opponent. So, but at the same time, you are taking the risk of gambling with their effects. But it's something you have to be aware of. But like, you try to play less dangers that 
don't force you to waste their effects, if you guys get what I mean. So, cards that don't really force you to waste your effects are Nessie. What happens when this card is discarded? Um, they all have, like I said, they all have the same first effect. If it's discarded, though, you could add one danger card from your deck to hand, except Nessie. So, in itself, this card is always going to be an extender. It's going to be there to help you get to certain dangers that you are also searching for that may come in handy in certain situations. And you the, the re, that's the reason why you max on this card, because it's a card that lets you plus one regardless. So, for other dangers, we're going to Jackal, I'm pretty sure where it does. It's supposed to from the action from the main deck to the field and defense. Tsuchinoko. Pitching itself, still get a special, but with no draw. And let's go straight to the Kastiras. Obviously, we're going to be playing three Kastira Fenrir. Uh, they have the same first effect. If you control no monsters, you spell some from the hand. But this card allows you to, what makes them the best one is that during your main phase, you can add one Kastira monster from deck, including itself, to your hand. From the deck to the hand. Just to let you guys be aware. So you can keep... Uh, Put, take some notes as well as keep intact of what, how it works. So when this card declares an attack, or if your opponent activates a monstrous except effect, except during the damage step, you could target one face-up card. Your opponent controls banish it face down. So we're going to Unicorn and Max down this card because we want to be able to extend with our link plays, and you don't entirely have to go into uh, rank seven monsters or XCs in general. So this one is very important because. It allows you to add a specific spell that really helps for this deck. Just be able to, like, just um, thin your deck as much as possible, as well as get to a huge extra amount of summons. And be able to get to certain plays that you're hoping that you can achieve. And with this card, during your main phase, you can add one Kastra spell from your deck to your hand. Let me rephrase that, which I said before. Hope you guys remember, but when this card declares an attack, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can look at your opponent's extra deck, banish one monster from there, face down. And in itself is very useful because if you go first, you get it to inspect your opponent's extra deck, and whatever monster you deem as a threat, you get to get rid of it. And something that I feel like you have to max out, which is why the price on this card, the price tag on this card has, uh, been skyrocketing so it's not anywhere like 10 to 15 where it's now if you look at it it's a, like a 20 dollar card so for our other nemesis core pieces we're playing corridor they all the, the the small nemesis monsters they have similar effect you could target one of your banished monsters shuffle it to the deck special summon it from the hand and but with corridors that it has the least useful effect because you target one of your banished nemesis monsters at your hand although it is good that it lets you add one, but there's better ones that I'm going to show you that I haven't mentioned yet, uh, which is obviously you're maxing out. Three flag. During your main phase, you can add one nemesis monster from your deck to your hand, except flag. Which you don't really need entirely any flag, so. And our last nemesis monster that's in the main deck is Umbrella. This is will come in handy because you can retrieve your flag, you can retrieve your Stratos, you can retrieve Corridor. And then you could continue forward if you want to continue making more link plays if you haven't used their first effect yet. And this makes sure that you get to retrieve your targets that are banished and be able to just keep making loops with this deck. So there's a huge amount of loops that applies that will just make the deck that more viable and giving you more resource. And for our spells, we're playing Theolure. Obviously to draw two, you banish one darks. We have like 12 of them, which uh, can be very, very be useful. And, it, and this card varies depending on the number of dark attributes. Consider we're playing 12. Three isn't a bad option. Playing less isn't really, I feel like wouldn't help because you want to draw into your core pieces as much as possible so that you can get make your deck as quick, as consistent as possible because banishing also helps be able to make use of your nemesis monsters because like i said before you target one of your banish monsters they get shuffled deck special summon so you can to use more special summons as well as well as more draw power for more for other um, duplicates we're playing three dark lunar more 
which because I can tell you Omni Negates are still relevant and a problem. And Dark Rule No More fixes that, although they don't take battle damage, this ensures they get an opportunity to play while they still have monsters on the field. Because they don't have any ways of or any means to stop you from using for any of you for playing if their monster effects decide to negate multiple times. And you want to be able to have that opportunity to actually do something. So and helps you move forward with the deck and so that you can be able to accomplish whatever you're after. So another card that helps get rid of Omni Gates, stops them, is for a bin drop, obviously. Although this will require us to send cards. What helps that they 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 won't be not only will they not take they may not take the, the thing is they they don't take battle damage. You send a card from your hand or field to the grave. You select one monster. It's not, let's just say you be aware, guys. It's not targeting. You select that many monsters up to the number of cards that were sent to the grave by this effect. Their effects are negated on top of their attack is halved, and your opponent cannot re respond using cards depending on the card types that you send, whether it's monster spell or trap. And for our final Kashira card, which is just our continuous spell, is Kashira Birth. Allowing us to normal summon level 7 monsters without tributing, which also includes Nessie, even though it's not a Kashira monster. Um, if your opponent activates spell card or effect while you or while you control a Kashira monster, you could target three cards in your opponent's graveyard, bash them face down, and I forgot to mention the middle effect where during your main phase you can spell summon one of your non XC Kashira monsters that is either bash or in your graveyard. And the reason why it's useful because if your opponent decides to bash Kashiras and they think it's enough to stop them. They are going to have to guess again. Whereas once birth is in play, you can simultaneously retrieve them. And it's a never ending um, session with these cards. So you have never ending Fenrir's unicorns that, can be, that do what they that are capable of just helping get rid of cards, whether it's on the field or in the extra deck, and helping you manage to retaliate. And for our one of spells, Monster Reborn, and we'll obviously we're maxed out three triple tactics talents. In case your opponent decides to hand trap you, this allows you to be able to draw two cards, take control of one monster in your opponent controls. But look at your also including look at your opponent's hand, shuffle, choose one, shuffle to the deck. And I always feel like this this deck is gonna be hand trapped, so I feel it is important to, to max out on this card. So whatever they try to do. You can at least be able to draw two cards, you can get something out of it, because you want to find ways of like countering any cards you are sure of that just basically have been very prevalent, as well as helping you commit to your board, and cards that just interfere with your plays, because it is guaranteed, it is most likely guaranteed that it's going to happen during your turn while your opponent decides to activate monster effects during your turn. So you gotta be highly cautious of it. So sometimes it is important whether it's a brick or not. This card can do so much once your opponent decides to activate an effect afterwards. So after the activating effect, you have something to respond with, you draw two cards, helps you just go forward and try to push your opponent and then putting a lot of pressure on them. And I'm mean, talking too much, I'm gonna go straight to the extra deck. All very generic, all very useful monsters. Access Code Talker, I'm sure you guys are aware how it works. But basically the best link for in the extra deck. Your opponent can activate cards or effects in this card in response to this card's effect or activation. If it's link summoned, you target one link monster that was used as a material for its link summon. This card gains attack equal to the link monster's rating times a thousand. And plus you can just banish a link monster from the field or graveyard to so one card your opponent controls. But it has to be a different attribute, and because considering it is uh, more than once per turn, it depends on the different attributes that you banish on field or grave. Plus, they can't respond, like I said before, like giving you the upper hand and giving you the edge to actually kill your opponent. So, our other link forward playing is Appaloosa, which basically helps stop your opponent's first turn if you go first, which is linked to summon into it, and then although eventually its attack will be zero. You have something to actually sl sl slow down your opponent, wear them down, so that they're forced to not retrieve their resources or gain upper advantage by drawing a lot of cards, getting their main core pieces, searching their one-ofs, 
and this card will come in hand because although you reduce its attack by 800 and it gains 800 times the number of monsters with different names as material it helps going first regardless so but it can also help going second depending if you if you out if you outmatch your opponent if you manage to outboard them and you manage to have more monsters while they have the least amount of like um, creatures on field so for our link two, we're playing Barricade Board Blocker. It's been a while since I've seen this card being used, but it will come in handy because it helps us search our custody, custody or our birth. Even if you don't manage to search with Unicorn, this has a way of get, retrieving it, so because it's a continuous spell. Although it's during the end phase. On top of that, although you don't want to have it on the field for too long, face up spells you control can be controlled by your opponent's card effects. But it's many topics to go to link two plays to have a co-link with other monsters and do you be able to utilize and use the full potential of other link monsters if you guys get what i mean our link three are playing blacklist soldier soldier okay since we have the room to put to place it into the extra deck we're playing a lot of level seven higher monsters so that effect will become eventually um most reliant and it will be active for sure because of the cards we have in our main deck on top of that, if this card destroys the most ones most of a battle, you're most likely just want to banish one card in the field rather than have it gain 50 on, have it gain a second attack during the battle phase the next turn. But banishing one card that is non-targeting on the field is the is usually the effect that you're gonna go for. Um Boar Sword, obviously you guys should be aware it's swing for gain, just switches with one of your monsters to defense, gains it gives an additional attack. On top of that, when it attacks in the Opponent's monster it gains half that monster opponent's attack while the opponent's uh, the opposing monster loses while the opposing monster has uh, has his attack halved as well. So basically, they're going to take 3k in the face immediately. So, Fogo because I mean, dark. What do I mean, Fogo? Sorry, dark because darks are very relevant, they're very popular in Yu Gi Oh! And in his E, you can you have easily at you can easily access this card. On top of being able to say Danger Bigfoot and Suji Noko. But on top of that, helps you expand your link plays. Uh, like I said, Dark Monsters are very relevant. They're very popular. They they are also been reluctant in the meta. So it's one of those cards where you can use their own Dark Monsters against them. Because what happens is that like you can either use it for a link player. You can use that monster against them. And our other link to Dark actually monsters is IP in case we want to link some Dark Bones turn to go into Appalooza. On top of that, monsters that are used to link summon with this card cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. And obviously, we're playing the Nightmare Package, Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn, Crusadia, Avermax. Because in this deck, is since we're playing a lot of Link 2s, you have easy access to this card. On top of that, when it's link summoned, it cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects also they cannot attack other monsters by for attacks except this card once we're out of, this card always anytime this card battles special monster it's always going to gain attack equal to that monster's attack during the damage step only even though it's during the damage step only it's always going to be stronger than any special summon mod field any special summon monster out there on the field plus if it's sent if this link summon card sent to the to your graveyard by opponent's card you shuffle one card on the field to the deck saryuja because we have we want to be able to draw into more cards you just play one because considering although its effect is not hard once per turn it's not once per turn effect besides it's special summon effect it just allows the fact is it allows you to draw four cards allows you to put some one monster from your hand especially if it's a kashtir or a bestial monster if you don't have any darks in your grave and you just want to get to a certain monster that can help you grind throughout this game help you get into a certain link monster or you want to be able to activate a monster effect after you special summon that monster so you can activate the effects during the main phase then you might as well go through with it our link to is security dragon not the best but it's very generic easy to summon just literally requires any monster in the, on the field regardless of its type on top of that while once while it's face up on the field while it's coral calling, you could target one monster your opponent controls, return the hand. Although maybe hard points per turn, but it helps with the nightmare combo that you can go with. Because the easily basically like I said, 
Nightmares are literally going to be pointing upwards while this card's pointing downwards. Plus, you get another draw. You get to basically get rid of a card in your opponent's field. You draw a card. On top of that, you can use save Security Dragon's effect later to return one monster on the field to the opponent's hand. Um, our, we're, not, we're already closing in to the extra deck. We're also playing Underworld Goddess since we have IP as well as a lot of monsters that we can summon into. Considering a lot of the monsters and the main are also beat sticks. And it's just easy to access this card and we can make the most out of this card. It's unaffected by card effects that don't target this card. And on top of that, if your opponent special summons a monster from the graveyard by card effect, you can negate it for free. And the port pattern, I don't think I mentioned this, but on top of that, even though I mentioned it before, you can use one of your opponent's uh, monsters as link material for this card. So not only get your monster using three or four of your monsters, whatever, and on top of using one of your opponent's monsters to link summon this card, which is also a link five. Which requires more, but at the same time allows you to get rid of an opponent's monster as well. And for our new Link 4 monster that has been introduced from Darkwing Blast, I haven't, this is the first I'll be using in an um, actual deck profile, is World Sea Dragon Zalantis. You can only control one copy of this card, obviously that's why we're playing one. During your main phase, you can banish all monsters on the field and special summon as many monsters as possible that were banished by this effect to their owner's field face up or in face down defense position. Because this helps you fix link monsters and putting them in the main monster zone, allowing you to summon in to more link monsters. And on top of that, you can have literally monsters that link monsters that have link arrows point to this card onto the main monster zone, allowing you to activate this effect during the battle phase. You can destroy cards on the field up to the number of cold link monsters. Left. Although this card may not be getting enough attention. It is very, in a way, it is flexible, and if you are heavily reliant on link monsters, so you can be able to make the most out of this card, because the fact is, you can, it's the fact that you can literally move link monsters from the extra monster zone to the main monster, and be able to summon more link monsters, that's what people are not looking at. On top of that, you can literally have, literally monsters, if you have two or three link monsters, or... Depending on your opponent's field, if they have monsters that are calling, you get to destroy even more cards. So if your opponent has two monsters that are calling, if you have two or three or more, regardless, like you get to make the most out of the, the last effect. So overall, it's not a bad card. It's just that because there's so many Link 4s that this card got overshadowed. But if you're playing in a, a heavy Link spam deck, you might as well include it, especially have the space to afford to actually use this card. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check upcoming content later in the future. There will eventually be a dual video coming soon to you in the future re regarding this deck. But again, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Be sure to check your notifications. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.